Hi y'all, it's Becky. Today I want to show you uh, something, a little something about how I put together my journal covers. I want to talk to you about that a little bit. And, but first, I want to tell you all about some things I got at the thrift store yesterday and what I'm going to do with them. This right here is 16 yards. <laughs> 16 yards of red lace that I got for $2.50 at my um, local thrift store. And I think that what I'm going to try for some of this, just to see, is I'm going to try dyeing it with this aquamarine dye to see if it comes out purple. Because I've been having a hard time finding per anything, any trim that's purple lately. And if that doesn't work out, I'll just go out with the violet and see how that comes out. But I bet you I can do it. I bet you I can figure it out. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I'll start, cut it up and, and sell it in batches. <laughs> I also found some interesting, about a yard and a half of uh, green lace. And I found three packages of this blue hem facing lace. And... Uh, it's really pretty and they were 50 cents each complete packages then another thing I found was this um, their um, book plates they're just book plates that look just like that they uh, show you uh, this from the library of pretty fancy huh this is a one I decided I got, and I'm sorry I bought it, but it was only 50 cents, and I can always uh, alter the playing cards. But I bought it because it said it was B playing cards, and I liked the, the box. And I thought, well, if with any luck, I'm going to open this up, and there's going to be Bs on the front. <laughs> but sure enough, they're just regular playing cards. But hey, it was worth a try for 50 cents, and... And I might just um, use the box for fun. Also, for 50 cents, I came across this little package of um, stick-on bows that I can use for decoration. And then, I really like this. And what it is, is it's a table runner. And it was only a dollar. And what I'm going to do with this table runner is I'm going to photocopy the baskets and the embroidery parts um, to make uh, uh, background paper to use to print out myself. And then after I've done all that photocopying, I'm going to cut these out individually to use uh, in my journals that are coming up and also this was four dollars and it is a 54 inch long lace table runner and i'm going to use some of that dye and try dyeing this and i'm going to use um, food coloring to try to dye some of this up i've got plenty of it so i'm going to play with this and i think that is going to be a little fun project and then for all you people who like journals that are uh, neutral colors. Isn't this beautiful? Two dollars for five napkins. I thought that was a great deal. And then I got the placemats, two for a dollar, and, and same pattern. And I thought, that is so pretty. But since I don't like to work in neutral colors, I may put some of these out uh, for sale or to trade. Uh, in, in Happy Mail or something. Another idea I had was try to uh, dye it with pink. Put a little pink on it to make, give it a pink color. Um, and it should come out kind of a dusty pink. And I may try to use um, the uh, inks to dye it. And I'm going to play. These are all playing for play and to cut them up. And here's another big piece of lace I got. 31 inches by 31 inches and it is really another piece of neutral lace, but it's really pretty. It's kind of stretchy 
Um, and there again, I don't like this. New, this one's a little yellow for me. So what I might do with this one um, is consider dyeing it um, a, a different color. Uh, I might could do this one with some um, blue. And, and when I put blue on it and it's so yellow, it may come out green, which is fine with me because I like to use a lot of blue green in my journals. This is a, a 34 by 38 inch piece of lace that is navy blue. And I haven't opened this one up all the way, but it is just lace, navy blue lace wrapped up in there, hiding from it. Okay, now I wanna talk to you a little bit about how I decide how I decided to make uh, journal covers using paper for the cover as opposed to uh, uh, <clears throat> some type of fabric or something that's more heavy duty and this has worked out pretty well for me um, making these covers um, and this is just a paper that I used and this happens to be from a um, from the drop paper, paper just like this uh, that's underneath here. It's a little heavy. Um, it's just Strathmore sketch paper, a big, big old um, sheet that I've got. I bought in a sketch pad this size. And I use it underneath my acrylic and ink paintings and to wipe off my brushes and to, um, uh, to test out my ink pens and, and all, you know, to see how they're going to work. Because um, I use a lot of those in my artwork. So, um, then once it gets all full and all messed up, I may add a little bit to it with some spray inks or something. Um, and then, once it's full, I will just tear it and cut it up and use it to put on the cover. Now... I do my covers with paper, and in this one, in most of my journals, it's a cereal box that I cut down. And then I just glued the paper onto it with a Mod Podge. Um, one important thing, though, when you're working with paper for your journal covers is you've got to seal it or else it's going to get damaged and, and it's going to start tearing. Um, no matter how good that you put it down with Mod Podge. So if you don't want your edges all frayed up real fast, what you need to do is seal it. And what I do is I take mine outside and I give it multiple sprays on the outside only, but multiple sprays with a semi gloss clear coat spray. Uh, this one happens to be Rust-Oleum, but, uh, Krylon or uh, even one of the more expensive uh, artist varnish sprays is good, but I give it at least three coats, sometimes four or five um, on the on the outside just to seal it when it's all done. And the next thing I do after I've got this thing all together is I have to decide. Uh, of what type of closure I'm going to do. This particular one I haven't decided yet, but the reason you want to do it when you first make the cover is because some of the closures need to be added in before you sew in your signatures. For instance, if I'm going to punch a hole and use an eyelet to tie ribbons through here, I want to do it now before I have my signature sewn in. Uh, it's a lot easier and a lot more accurate to do it in advance. Also, what I have been doing is punching a hole at the top of the spine um, and putting the eyelid in so I can clip on a, a tassel. And I do that right when I make it, when I can lay it out flat and get it all ready. So the next thing I'll do on this one is I'll get that hole punched and I'll decide on what kind of closure I'm going to make, but I'm not going to do the closure. I will probably, um, once I've decided, I will probably 
punch the holes that I need to punch and set the eyelets that I need to set. Um, but I won't make anything that's bulky because I want it at this point to be able to work on it flat. On the inside, uh, I covered the spine with a piece of Tyvek, um, but you can use um, any kind of material really um, that will uh, give it some added strength. Um, I like Tyvek because it lays flat, uh, but you can use any kind of material to reinforce it. And then after I've done that, that's when I add my decorative papers on top. Um, I would have used, if I'd had enough of the, the outside paper, I would have used it in the inside, but I, I didn't. So I just chose some paper that I thought would look all right and put it in the inside. I glued it down and I glued it down with Mod Podge. Um, but I put a really thin coat down uh, on the book first and then I put the paper down and then then um, worked out all the air bubbles. I'm still not perfect at doing that. <laughs> okay, well, and I got the signatures all ready to go on this one. And uh, so I will probably be sewing in the signatures and I have to decide about the closure first, but I'll be sewing in the signatures and making a spot for my tassel next. Okay, I hope this gave you guys some ideas of what you can do uh, for your journal covers. Uh, if this helped you any or you'd like to see more of my videos like this, leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll get back with you. And I appreciate any comments you make. And also, if you want to see more of these, um, hit that like button for this video and then go and hit the subscribe button. So in the notifications bell, so you'll be notified whenever I do any new ones. All right. I hope y'all are having a great day and I'll be seeing you again real soon.